Hey you, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use Manga Studio 5 or as it's known nowadays, Clip Studio Paint. And I'll be using these two names interchangeably, so try not to get confused. Um, specifically, how to use it to draw comics or manga, because this is technically a continuation of my how to make manga tutorial series. So if you haven't watched the last two videos, I will leave the links to those in the description below. So as you can see from the website, this program has a variety of functions such as manga, illustration, and animation. Um, I've personally never really tried to use it for illustration or animation, but I'm pretty sure it's a perfectly capable program for those as well. Um, a frequent question I got from you guys was, what's the difference between Clip Studio Paint X and Clip Studio Paint Pro? Well, I bought this program while it was still under the name of Manga Studio, so I'm actually not quite sure what it directly transfers to. But here's a diagram from their official website, and from the looks of it, what I have is Clip Studio Paint Pro. From my understanding of it, the only difference between Pro and X is the ability to use multiple pages, which can be extremely helpful, but after using Pro for such a long time, I really don't think it makes that big of a difference. Uh, the price difference is also ridiculous, so I mean, it's up to you. But either way, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the program itself should be pretty much the same. So I'll get on with the actual interface. Uh, when you open it, this is what it should look like. I'll do a one by one rundown of all the tools you need to know to draw comics, but um, yeah, let's start off with talking about paper size. To begin, let's go to the top left corner and select File and then New. Right away, you should notice that our windows look a little different. Um, <laughs> this is because uh, this is actually my custom template that I've saved as a preset. These are the dimensions that are used if you want to draw a traditional manga page. Um, you guys are all well-functioning adults that can read on your own, so I will just show you everything and let you copy it. Uh, but yeah, make sure that you have register mark slash base room checked. The resolution is at 600. Um, if you want, down here you can click save setting and save it as a template of your own, like what I did. So for me, I saved it as something called manga page. After you press OK, this is what it should look like to you. Um, this rectangle in the middle is ultimately where you're drawing, and it is recommended to actually extend your frames outside of this border so that when printing companies are cutting the page, there's more room for error. But if you're not worried about that, then just ignore it. Alright, now all this equipment here on the left hand side should be fairly straightforward. You've got your standard move around tools, plus magic wand, plus lasso, and color pickers and whatnot, and different types of brushes. Um, if you've ever seen MS Paint, you should generally know what these are used for. If you don't, play around with it. They do have a couple of new functions around here. But these four icons are probably the biggest difference between Mango Studio and every other art program out there. These are specifically geared towards comic making, and I'll obviously be explaining them one by one. The second last one here is probably the most straightforward one. This is what you use to draw speech bubbles. You can use the ellipse tool to draw perfectly symmetrical speech tools, or freestyle it using the balloon pen and then edit the edges later. Uh, you can also add a balloon tail, and you can even add text. But anyways, generally to start off, you begin by making panels. Uh, you do that by using the third icon from the bottom here. It actually has three functions, so the icon there actually changes depending on which ones you choose. Uh, they have direct draw, frame, and ruler. I'll explain ruler later, but direct draw is basically your line tool, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and yeah, let's go to frame. You use this tool to make rectangles that will act as your panel. I suggest you do a sketch first, either by hand and scan it in, or just on this program itself before you actually make the frames. Here is a sketch for chapter 3 that I did for my webcomic, When the Stars Misalign. P.S. For those of you new here, make sure you check it out in the links below, wink wink. <laughs> but um, I will use this as an example to show you guys how I do things. Basically, my first step with this tool is to always make one huge rectangle around the border. This gives you more control and flexibility on how you move them around later. Notice how right on the right here in the layer panel, they've created an empty folder for you with a mask on. So what this does is that if you new make a new layer under the folder and draw on this now, you won't be able to draw outside of the frame, which is really, really useful. 
Next, I will explain to you another one of these Clip Studio Paint specific icons, and that is this very bottom one. There's two sections for this as well. I personally have never touched this garbage cleaner thing, so let's just ignore it for now. Uh, within correct line, there are a couple of very useful tools. But for our purposes right now, we will select the last one called Cut Frame Border. Now, this does exactly what it says well. It will cut the frames. <laughs> Notice how it automatically makes new folders for you on the right here as well. And this is what makes this program so ridiculously useful. Uh, after you cut the frames, you can also move it using this icon I've been avoiding up at the top. I'm sure this can be used to move a variety of things, but I mainly use it to move frames and speech bubbles. Um, you can use this to move the whole frame or move the corner of the frame. But um, notice how if you resize them, it automatically moves the nearest frame with it. Uh, I find this annoying a lot of times, so to fix it, all you have to do is uncheck this eye here besides the layer of the frame that you don't want to resize. Um, it just hides it, and then while you resize the frame, it won't move that one, and then afterwards you can just show it again, and all will be good. Now that you've got frames down, it is time to start lining. Uh, if you look on the bottom of the layers panel, you'll notice that there's this one called new rasterized layer and one called new vector layer. Um, I almost always use the vector layer. This is because these lines are flexible and can be changed, so it can be very useful, especially when you're drawing something like manga. So here, let me draw a random line to show you guys how our on vector layers work. Um, basically, after you've drawn it, there are two amazing things that you can do with it. Um, if you go back to the bottom most icon and select control point, which basically turns this into like the line tool in um, Paint Side for those of you who are familiar with it. Um, but, but yeah, basically, oh, you can just hover over your lines to show the points and manipulate it and move it however you wish. The other amazing thing you can do with vectors is the line with correction tool. This basically saves my life and it is the reason why you honestly do not need a good tablet to draw manga or comics. Okay, so basically, if you select it, it essentially functions as a brush that you can use to go over other lines and it changes the thickness of the lines. So if you move to the right of the brush panel here, and click on tool property, you can change whether you're changing a section of the line to be thinner or thicker, which I don't know about you guys, but when I first found out about this, it like blew my mind. And this is one of the like best features hands down of Manga Studio slash Clip Studio Paint. Now, last but not least, there is another super cool function in there called rulers. To find it, um, you have to go back to this frame icon and up here, select ruler. There are plenty of different rulers you can play around with, but the one I specifically use is special ruler. Um, even within this one selection, there are like five different types that you can choose from. Um, for me, I only ever really use the top two, parallel line and re-radiation line. Irradiation, yes, irradiation line. Parallel lines basically create a guide that functions like a legit physical ruler. Uh, once you make the selection, every line you draw will follow a straight line. Um, right now, I'm literally using the mouse and see how everything you draw, no matter where I start and where I end, it follows a perfect line. This is very, very useful for drawing backgrounds or um, any type of dynamic effects like speed lines or something. Irradiation line, on the other hand, creates a central point, and from that point, everything you draw becomes a perfect line that zooms into it. And this is especially great for creating, well, speed lines as well, and um, those like fancy focus in effects. There's so much more that I can go on about this program, but unfortunately, I'm going to end it here today. Um, these are what I would consider as the top most important things in Clip Studio Paint when it comes to making manga and comics. And honestly, you guys should be set after that huge blob of information I just dumped on you. And now, cough cough for some shameless advertisement, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I've been trying to branch out onto different social medias lately, so let me know in the comments below where you think is like a good place for artists, and etc. But anyways, to see me actually use all the things I talked about today in this video in action, make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned for how to make manga part 4.
If you're already part of the fam, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and check out my web comic link below. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you lovelies around. Until next time.